And welcome back to The Wrap. We want to continue our conversation about Carly Fiorina because I know that Brad wanted to share his thoughts on the fact that when she uh, finished up her campaign in 2010, Senate run in California, lost by 10 points. Uh, now, before that, she got a big severance from HP, so she was pretty well, well off. Yeah. And, and I, I think the problem that some people will have when this story gets discussed a little bit more is the fact that she didn't pay her own employees, but she paid whom? Ex well, she paid herself. The truth is she gave about $5.1 million to the campaign and lent about $1.5 million to the campaign. She got back her one point five before she paid off the 500000 to the people well who worked for her. Well well, yeah, months and months and months before. months before. And again, I have no problem, and I know $500,000 is nothing in a political campaign, but if you're, it's your salary, you don't pay yourself back as a boss and leave your employees hanging. I have nothing against Carly Fiorina. I don't think she's a serious candidate. But there is something fundamentally wrong when you pay yourself back threefold and have people work for you hanging there. I mean, not right. the irony of her saying that she is the one candidate, that's what she says, she's the only candidate running for president yeah. who understands the economy. This is her understanding of the economy. And boy, does that speak volumes for what she's all about. And it's troublesome. I think we're all in agreement that she has very little or no chance to right. win. Yeah. Right. But but does this hurt her vice presidential? Well, see, I was just going to say, she may not win, but she's running for vice president. Right. Mm -hmm. And if right. she is, it'll come back to haunt her. That 1.5 to you, 500 not going to your employees. If she's the vice presidential candidate, we're going to hear that stat over yeah. and over and over again, Indeed. I think. Let's talk about some other stats right now, more in your ballpark, Mr. Hirschfield. Yeah. Christianity remains on the decline in America. A new poll from Pew says that just under... 71% of Americans identify themselves as Christian. That's nearly an eight-point drop from seven years ago. Meanwhile, almost one in four considered themselves atheist or agnostic. A nearly 7% rise. Have fun pushing that boulder for eternity. When you break it down, <laughs> hey, I'm playing it safe, man. When you break it down by the two biggest Christian faiths, Protestants showed the most decline with a drop of almost 5%. The number of people who identify themselves as Catholic is down nearly three. President Obama, who says he's a Christian, has taken heat from critics who says he bends over backward for other religions, especially Islam. A few months ago at the National Prayer Breakfast, he sparked outrage when he compared the atrocities committed by ISIS to those by Christians centuries ago. And lest we get on our high horse and think this is unique to some other place, remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. In our home country, slavery and Jim Crow all too often was justified in the name of Christ. So, Brad, is this a max, uh, mass exodus, or are we just misreading these no, numbers? No, we have to be very careful. This is like a moment, that's just the 1920s, and religion is actually transportation. Buggy makers were under a lot of pressure, but the transportation business was about to explode. The decline is not a mass decline in Christianity. It's in one segment, really two segments of the Christian world, mainline Protestantism and Catholicism. The evangelical community is strong and possibly even growing. Pew doesn't say that. Other sides I could bring you show that's growing. So what's really going on here is people are not walking away from faith. They're walking away from certain inherited ways of doing religion. Religion and faith they're not the same. Atheism is not going up. Unaffiliation is going up. What that means is people still believe, but they don't necessarily believe in the practices and in the dogmas they were taught in Sunday school or Friday school or Saturday school. So for me, this makes it a remarkably interesting moment for faith in America because the interest in faith has gone nowhere. If anything, it's increasing. What's under pressure are the old providers of faith. But don't you think there's also a cultural cost in saying that you're a Christian these days? With everything that's going on with regards to what goes up, what's gone on it's in the Catholic Obama's Church. Fault. No, no, not Obama. I'm not talking about Obama, but with gay marriage and all the all the Christians who are against gay marriage and the backlash that we've seen against those people. I think that there are some people who may have been Christians nominally by name only who are now no longer saying that because they don't want to deal with the repercussions of it. So I think there's probably a little bit of that, although the people most vociferously opposed to gay marriage are evangelical Christians and they're not yeah. showing erosion. The erosion is actually in the mainline Protestant community My. which embraces it. No, I think what's going on is people are trying to figure out new ways of embracing the search for spirituality and meaning even as they push away the old systems that provided it to them. My uh, my spiritual advisor, Michelle Bachman, has... Uh, <laughs> Still, has, huh? Yes, absolutely. She can leave Congress, but she cannot leave my heart. Mm. Uh, 
<laughs> she has let me know that Barack Obama is ushering in the end days. Now, if that's not being anti-Christian, or maybe it's being no, pro-Christian. No, that would be very pro. I'll take it back. She figures Obama, she's going to win. O Obama is the best thing that ever happened. Right. I, you know, I just can't believe that since this stuff came out today that I haven't heard more people saying, well, Obama right. is war against Christianity. There are people, I think, know. So it's I thought an overplayed that I hand at best and a complete falsity yeah. at worst, and it's silly. And the real I, issue, if you believe in tradition, figure out how to use it in new and creative to, to ways. Be, to Otherwise, be serious, people will though, be bereft of to, what they need. To be quickly serious, I looked at the data. It's really young people, it appears, that are pulling back the most. And, and you're right about what you said. They still have faith. They just aren't identifying. And that'll be the last word on that for now. Coming up next, a racist interview that recently resurfaced is bringing Democrats and Republicans together. We'll show you. Stay right there.